Greetings, church family. This week in our reading challenge, we're making our way through the Gospel of John. And in John chapter 5, we come across a number of significant truths which Jesus taught concerning his own identity. And his opponents were actually seeking to kill him for it. We read in, in verse 18 of chapter 5, This was why the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him. Because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was calling even God his own father, making himself equal with God. So that's a clear teaching of Christ, his equality with the Father. You know, Jesus proceeds to speak of his own authority and that he has resurrection life in himself, just like the Father. Now what is interesting is the way in which he speaks uh, about eternal resurrection life. He does so in two ways, almost in the same breath. First, in verses 24 and 25, we read, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. So when someone puts their faith in Jesus Christ and believes in him, that person passes from spiritual death to spiritual life. It's a spiritual resurrection, and there's many other passages that speak about that, like Ephesians 2. Theologically, we would call this regeneration, a raising from the dead, giving new life. Um, second, he also speaks of a future resurrection. In verses 28 and 29, Do not marvel at this, for an hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come out, those who have done good to resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. So putting these two things together, we can conclude that there are two resurrections a spiritual one and a physical one. And this is indicative of a now, not yet idea found throughout the New Testament in light of Christ's first and second comings. Commenting on John 5, D.A. Carson puts it this way, The resurrection life for the physically dead in the end time is already being manifest as life for the spiritually dead. It is the voice of the Son of God that calls forth the dead, and those who hear will live. Later, Jesus says in chapter 6, verse 40, For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up in the last day. So this means that as believers in Christ, we have spiritual resurrection life now even as we live in this world. But we will also be raised bodily at Christ's return, which is not yet. The two resurrections are intimately connected. You cannot participate in one without the other. So be encouraged. If you're trusting in Christ alone for eternal life, you are already participating in resurrection life, which... Ephesians 1 tells us is greater than any power of opposition in this world. Greater than any uh, opposition from the enemy. Any sin that still dwells in us. That gives us hope. That same power that raised Christ from the dead is at work in us. And also, you can eagerly await his return and the certain resurrection of your body. That's what we affirm when we recite the Apostles' Creed. One of the truths down through the centuries that the church has affirmed is the resurrection of the body, that future hope. So may your future hope encourage you this day and keep reading. God bless.